includes part of is risk management, which is diversification. So why should someone um, buy a short-term versus long-term asset? You know, what, was that just a diversification thing or was it just because you had some... No, well, it wasn't meant to be short. You mean a short-term rental uh, asset? Yeah, but I, um, you know, versus, I mean, I, I was just because it was a good deal or was that well, was their strategy? When we saw the house, we just knew that it was ideal for a short-term rental situation because it, it has a long driveway. It's in a beautiful neighborhood, four bedroom, four and a half bath. So it's perfectly suited to that. And it's within walking distance of downtown Columbia. And it's a four minute walk to the new um, uh, Mule What's it? Mule. Mule House, which is a music venue in Columbia, which is a, an old church that some guys renovated and it's absolutely beautiful. So that house in particular is just ideally suited for a short term rental. Okay, so location specific, mm -hmm. it was, yeah. You, yeah. that's what made you choose but, that. But I, I, I intend to hang on to that for the long term. Uh, it, it's. I, I think that house will double in value in a short period of time. Well, I think it already has. But so. it's, it's older and historic, too. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if it, I think it's on maybe the registry. But yeah, it's, it's a 1920 it's, vintage house. Yeah, so. it's, 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 it's... And it was rebuilt in 2017, years. so it's actually fresh. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was a real good deal, I would say. Well, cool. Yes. On that short-term property, a short-term rental that you have, what is your uh, management situation look like on that? Or how are you juggling? We well, that's the only short-term rental they have in that. It's managed by a company called Patriot Family Homes, and they, they, they're a military or former military-run outfit. So they're all either in the army or navy or whatever. But um, they they're out of town. Out of town. So we went with their their highest level of care, which was twenty-five percent. But we found that they really weren't performing as well as they weren't doing as much as they should have. For example, they don't. It, they didn't have any representatives even come to the place. So we just now, starting this month, have them on a 15% basis. And actually, when we retire, we may just do it ourselves completely, because in a sense, we're doing it ourselves already, but we just don't have the software. Any other questions so far? I mean, when you say, when you retire, <laughs> we retire. <laughs> we got one of those two are retired. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I. <laughs> no, I actually, I'm still getting paid. Well, yeah, that's true. But, <laughs> true, but you took early retirement. So, yeah. yeah, that was the best yeah, yeah. deal ever. Well, the other thing that I wanted to say, um, we have a, a huge soft spot in our hearts for um, people who serve in the military, and I just wanted to, you know, say this in front of everyone, both to you and to your brother Terry. Thank you for your service. And You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And we are really, really grateful. And I know that that has meant a lot to you, and your service has changed your life. Um, so thank you for doing that. And um, I do know for a fact that um, the Sullivans, and I think this is, speaks for both both brothers and and Barb, that they are they are generous, very generous people. And that kind of leads us to what you hear me say every single time that we meet together, that, that the whole purpose that we are doing what we're doing is to help you increase your standard of living to increase your standard of giving. Our goal is for you to be the change that you want to see in the world. And the way for you to be able to do that is to increase the amount of money that you have in your control that then you can then pay, what, pay it forward and pay it out. So... It, it, it is really important because happiness, it does not come sheerly from money. And there are a lot of us that we are focused on making money, but that is not the end game for all of us. And I don't want that for the people that we work with. That is not our goal for you. We truly do want to help you change your lives so that you can then turn around and help be a catalyst to change other people's lives. And one of the main reasons why we do this is so that you can actually see someone who is Proof of concept, someone who has actually gone from that first investment to now who owns probably, what, six or seven properties? At least. At yeah. least. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just have a question for, uh, for Pat, too. So, um, you know, because as we've had conversations, you know, you've, 
you know, kind of expressed, wow, you know, I would have loved it if I would have known about this much earlier, right? I mean, you know, so we have some folks in here that are, you know, much younger, right? Um, you know, and, and I know one of the things, you know, kids, you'd mentioned the family you grew up in wasn't really, you know, real estate wasn't really per se talked about. And then once you kind of discovered it and started, you know, reading some of the books and listening to whether it's Uncle G or whatever, you know, that type of stuff, you have always, you know, kind of like, hey, well, I wish I would have discovered this earlier. So do you have any advice for, for the, the, the crowd? Yeah, the I would audience? say... Um, I, I'm just about the oldest guy in here, so everybody, you're all at, at my um, advantage. But I would say just get started. That's that's the whole thing. Real estate is a get rich slow plan. Sometimes you can get rich quick, even though you, it, because, because you're levered. That's that's the the other beautiful part of it. Typically, you just put twenty percent down, and the bank puts in the other four parts. You get the hundred percent of the tax deductions, but and you own the whole property, so. But yeah, my advice would just be get started. Study up so you, you didn't do what I did and buy something you don't maybe didn't want, but stay at your W-2 job and, and save some money up. So that that's what I would say. Just get started, get started small. The other thing about real estate is there's so many ways to make money in this. Just buying single family houses and moving up, on up is, is one way to do it, but you can be a a roofer, you can be a floor guy, you can be a, a mortgage guy. I mean, I've never seen an industry where there's so many ways to make money. So you don't need to uh, cut anybody out of the pattern or anything like that. There's there's plenty to go around for everyone. So one of the lessons I think that uh, I know I've watched you learn is about the, having the right people on your team. So maybe you could talk about that. What, you know, uh, who, what are the members of the people that are on your team and, and not necessarily who we obviously are a part of that, but outside of us, you don't have to specifically name names, but just what are the, t the team members that are helping you? Yeah, well, it, it does help, obviously, starting with a, a broker. The, the broker can help you find a property, and uh, but you will need an attorney. And so, for example, it, when you do the 1031 exchange, you need a, an attorney that is at least part of his repertoire is to do 1031 exchanges because he's when you sell that property you have to give it to a, a third party you cannot take you can't touch the money at all it has to be held in escrow somewhere else so he, he's a member the um i have a, a cpa he my cpa is unbelievably valuable to me in fact my cpa i have him on a retainer and we talk every week and he's a very sharp guy, and he's incredibly helpful. Uh, but you, you also need uh, an insurance person, a banker. So I would really recommend get a rapport with um, with all of these individuals, and then you're going to need somebody to manage the property, probably, because uh, unless it's just a single family house, you, you're probably not going to want to do it yourself. Well, and I think you make a really important point that um, being a butthead does not help you get good team members, right? So you might get the cheapest price and you might be a bully and you might be able to do that, but then in the end, what does that do? You need to have people who are on your team who are gonna have your back, who are gonna look out for you and who are gonna give you good advice when they see that you're making a mistake and it matters. Um, because if you're an investor, you're not just in the cash flow or property property business. Ultimately, if you don't have the right team, you're not going to keep that money very long. So whether you like it or not, you're in the people business too. So be keeping that in the back of your mind. And I can say that Pat and Terry and Barb are some of the nicest people. They, they're very careful with their money, but they're genuinely a pleasure to work with. And that matters, right? I would walk on broken glass for them. And, and you know, late nights and do whatever to be able to help them because they have been so enjoyable to be able to help us find them properties. Um, so accountant, property manager, commercial pro commercial banker, banker yeah. uh, insurance broker, um, 1031 exchange person, somebody to review your contracts, mm -hmm. right? Um, because 
we're not lawyers. We're not, you know, we don't even play them on TV, right? <laughs> we can tell you we didn't stay at a Holiday Inn last night or whatever, so we want to make sure that you are covered, right? And I think, too, the, the one thing that I really appreciate about you also is that you own you own your, your, you hold yourself accountable for your own stuff too, right? You're not one of those guys that's going to blame everyone else for stuff. And, and you, and there, I mean, bad things can happen and you can, somebody may not be truthful, but then I, you go in and you just roll your sleeves up and get in there and, and fix it. Don't throw your hands up and just give up. (laughs) No, can't do that. So, um, as far as the um, working with contractors, that we haven't really talked about that. Do you have any advice about contractors? Because you've had to work with a bunch of them in, a, in several different states. And when I say contractors, I don't just mean all, all of those people are obviously subcontractors. But as a team member, do you have some advice about contractors? I found contractors to be one of the most difficult uh, aspects of owning real estate is because I, I have not, I guess I don't have a big enough business to have a crew of contractors. And right now with the labor shortage, just in general, finding people to fix your stuff is, is a big problem. Whether that's an electrician or plumber, you name it, they're, they're hard to find. Well, any other questions? Yes. Uh, I got a fun one. Um, how was it um, buying your first property and telling Barb, "Hey, let's get millions of dollars in debt"? You know, what do you what do you say? Um, how, how did that discussion yeah. go? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she said, "What about cost segregation?" Giving <laughs> <laughs> me a lot of credit there. <laughs> now, Barb's been real good about it. Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, once you logically look at how many uh, ways that you can excel in, in investing in real estate, it, it's uh, it's a no-brainer. But yeah, going back to what Brian was saying, uh, you know, what would be the advice? Be it would just be get started. So keep your W two job, save some money, but but get started. Because if you if you you double your investment every five or six years, you're gonna have more money. You know what to do it. Yeah, and I think Barb was, uh, you know, she's she's the one that's always on the uh, the internet searching properties, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Nothing too good. <laughs> she's but, as obsessed as you are, in, in different ways. So, yeah. you know. But I, I think I think it was you know it was interesting to me anyway. And when we first met, was the fact that yeah, you were out because of you know injury out of the work, but it gave you that time to really just dive into you know into real estate. You yeah. educated that, yourself. Those first yeah. few months that you and I knew each other, it was like we were on the phone almost daily. It seemed like we were talking or we're texting at three thirty in the morning or something. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. We and a lot of road trips <laughs> to people that decided yeah. they didn't want to sell their yeah. apartment. Yeah, yeah. But it gave you the opportunity to really dive in and, mm-hmm. yeah, and so learn. And you know, you that's one of the things we try to you know talk to a lot of people too is that may look at a first property. Sometimes it takes you know. A long time to find that first one. You put in a lot of LOIs and on a you know on a property, and you know that was kind of you know the experience here, right? Is is you know, but you had that opportunity to really dive in and learn, and I think that was so. What might have been a little bit of a negative experience because hey, I can't work this. It was actually a blessing because you got to dive in and really learn and understand the process and, and all that. So. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. So I would say if you have some hardship, there's probably a silver lining in there somewhere. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, you want to hand me my 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 cookie bribery? <laughs> You're so subtle with right. it, Jim. I know. <laughs> I'm going to make you share thank those you. with Barb. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, deal, we, uh, we enjoy the fact that Tiff's Treats is just right behind us and so you get to enjoy those squishy warm cookies when you get to come and I just want to say thank you for your continued um, patronage of our events um, and just give you a heads up that we will not be meeting until July I know you're probably all disappointed but it's part of that is because we're getting 
ready for our big event that is coming in June. And, um, and the, but our July event is actually most likely going to be at the Brentwood Library because we are, as you can see, getting too big for our britches and we don't want to get fire code violations and so we want to make sure that we can <laughs> afford more opportunity for people to come and to learn and to grow. Um, so um, if you know of family members that are even not, that are not within driving distance who might want to um, participate in this event, this is televised um, on a webcast and it will be available for them and they don't have to, whether they, whether they're our competitor whether they're that brother-in-law that's always asking you for money, then just, you know, send them, send them to have them watch this and have them learn how to make and invest and get their own money. Um, if you have friends that who are maybe wanting to learn um, and want to go in on a partnership or do some sort of syndication, but they're not quite ready for you to trust with your money, have them come and be on our um, our event so that they can learn, and they might be a couple of steps behind you but then this is a great way to help them and then also maybe you might know of somebody who you like to have be sitting here in this seat that you know maybe that would be a good suggestion for us so make sure that you email us or you can do it either to us directly or if there's somebody that you know that you would like to be on the hot seat and ask questions and and to be able to learn about some of their tips and tricks then for sure, please send us that. The other thing is that it takes us about a week to a week and a half, but we will have this evening also sliced and diced and put on to, to YouTube and then eventually we'll be on our website. So if he said something super profound that you wanna go put on repeat or go back to some of our previous episodes and um, into, look into our archives, those are also going to be available. Um, so don't forget to like, our social media, um, Google, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and give us great reviews if you enjoyed this program. And um, we love that we get to uh, provide it for you absolutely free. And people think maybe we're crazy for doing that, but the reality is that everybody wins when the tide rises. And you, even if you're a realtor, then when, then and you may be our, quote unquote competitor that we don't take that attitude at all. It's bring us deals. Let's do deals together. And and if you're participating in this event, then we know and see your face, then we're going to develop relationships of trust and you're going to want to do deals with us. So help us find those properties. If you are out there bird dogging, bring them. We have deep pools of buyers. Um, we can probably find somebody who can buy it without ever you having to go to market. So just keep that in mind and thank you for coming and be safe and remember, please increase your standard of giving. That's what it's all about. <laughs>